Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, tendons, bursa, bones, cartilages, joints. And today, let's talk about the serous membranes or serous cavities. They are many. The most famous three are the three P's. Pleura, pericardium, peritoneum. Pleura, around your lungs. Pericardium, around your heart. Peritoneum, around your abdominal viscera. There are many videos in this anatomy playlist. Please watch them. If you recall my video on water and body compartments, also my video on fake principle, we said that 60% of your total body weight is made of water. Why water? Why not oil? Why not liquid mercury or any other fluid? Well, for many reasons. Water has very high specific heat, capillary action is robust, excellent solvent, and reduction oxidation reactions. 60% of the total body weight of an adult male is made of water. In females, usually less, because females on average have more fat, and as you know, fat and water do not like each other. The lipophilic is hydrophobic. In infants, 75% of the total body weight is made of water, and that's why dehydration is very bad for infants. Most of the water in your body is inside the cell, intracellular. Only one third is outside, extracellular. This extracellular is in the plasma, in your blood vessels, in the interstitial space between the cell and the blood, which is here. And uh, what most doctors forget is transcellular fluid, which is in the three P's, the serous cavities, pleura, peritoneum, pericardium, and others, such as the tunica vaginalis around the testicles, such as synovial bursae and synovial sheaths around tendons. Also, perilymph and endolymph in your ear are transcellular fluids. The synovial fluid in your synovial joints also transcellular. Look at this beauty. This is my lung. Amazing. Here is larynx, trachea, main stem bronchus on the right and on the left. And then bronchi, bronchioles. The bronchioles end as terminal bronchioles. That's the end of the dead space. Then we start the real deal respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sac, and alveoli. Please recall that your right lung has three lobes, but your left lung only has two lobes. Your lung is surrounded by a very thin membrane known as the pleura. A layer of the pleura is touching your lung. It's called visceral because your lung is fleshy. It's a flesh, meaning viscera. The other layer is touching the wall wall, anything related to the wall is called parietal. Which wall? The chest wall. Between the visceral layer on the inside and the parietal pleura on the outside, there is your thin layer of serous fluid for lubrication. The serous fluid. Serous, not mucinous. Serous is thin. Mucinous fluids are thick because they are rich in mucin, which is a very thick protein. But these wonderful serous membranes that we'll talk about today are filled with serous fluid. What are these membranes? Pleura, around my lungs. Pericardium, around my heart. Peritoneum, around my abdominal viscera. Tunica vaginalis, around my testes. Synovial sheaths, around my tendons. Synovial bursae, next to synovial joints. What's the definition of serous cavities or serous membrane? Closed spaces, lined by thin membrane, which is lined by mesothelial cells, which come from the mesoderm. Remember that in embryology, you were a trilaminar embryo, three layers. Endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. All of these lovely doozies come from the mesoderm. These cavities are filled with thin film of serous fluid. Why? For lubrication. Which reminds me of the synovial fluid in the synovial joints, which we discussed before. It's also for lubrication. It's the exact same idea because both of them are transcellular fluids. In embryology, all of these membranes were invaginated by organs and tendons. 
Imagine that this is my hand, here is my fist, and I am pushing into a balloon. The layer of the balloon that is covering my hand is called the visceral layer, such as the visceral pleura. The other layer of the balloon that is away from my hand is called the parietal pleura. This is exactly what happened to your lungs. During embryology, your lungs, my fist, kept growing and growing and growing, larger and larger and larger, which occupied a larger space of the pleura. But still, between the parietal and visceral layers of the pleura, we have this lovely thin serous fluid. Here is the organ. Could be a stomach, could be a testicle, could be tendon, etc. How does this organ eat? Well, we gotta bring blood vessels to the organ. But how would you bring a blood vessel to that organ, even though the organ is hidden inside the serous cavity? Well, a mesentery will open the gate, let the blood vessels in, boom, we can supply the organ. Later, when we talk about anatomy of the abdomen, you will realize that many organs have mesentery. You know what? The tendon, which has a tendon sheath around it, also has a mesentery a mesentery to bring blood vessel to supply this tendon of that muscle. What do you call the mesentery of the tendon? Mesotendon. Beautiful. Do you remember our discussion of the bursae? Yeah. Where did they exist? Near synovial joints. Definition of bursae. Protrusion of synovial membrane through the joint capsule. Here is the joint capsule. An opening, which is an aperture. And before you know it, the synovial fluid will leak from inside the capsule to the outside of the capsule, filling in this bursa. So the bursa is sac filled with synovial fluid. Where did it come from? From the joint cavity. Who made the synovial fluid? The synovial membrane, which lines the inside of the joint capsule. What's a joint? It's the articulation of two bones. Why do we need bursa? Protection from impact, facilitation of movement, and lubrication. Therefore, your synovial fluid is not only in your synovial joint, it's also in the synovial bursa and in the synovial tendon sheath, which is a serous membrane. Let's take it to the clinic. Inflammation of the pleura is called pleuritis. Inflammation of the pericardium around your heart is called pericarditis. Inflammation of the peritoneum in your abdomen is called peritonitis. The first one will give me chest pain. The second one will give me chest pain. The third one will give me abdominal pain. Why is that? Because all of these are inflammations and the cardinal signs of inflammations are redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. What was the normal function? The normal function was a very beautiful, thin layer of serous fluid lubricating the movement, causing almost no friction and no pain. But if the layers are inflamed, for example, because I have pleurisy or pericarditis or peritonitis, of course it's gonna hurt. The lubrication is lost and the friction increases tremendously. To learn more about friction rub, check out my video titled Friction Rub in my Signs in Medicine playlist. Imagine that this is my heart. If I have a trauma, you know what's gonna happen? Well, let's say that the knife pierced this area and then pierced the blood vessel. Before you know it, tons of fluid will surround my heart. This is called what? pericardial effusion. If it is so severe, we call it cardiac tamponade. This can lead to a sharp decrease in my blood pressure, which is very dangerous. Learn about cardiac tamponade, trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, ophthalmological surgery, and much more by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.